Hi, it's good to be with you again for our next daily devotional as we're getting, now we're actually getting close to the end of the Sermon on the Mount. And our section today is Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 through 20. And what we're going to see in these verses is an incredibly important warning from Jesus. Beginning in verse 15, Jesus begins to talk about false prophets. And he he, he says, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. Now, it's important to remember that just one verse before this, Jesus was talking about entering through the narrow gate. Now, in verse 15, Jesus is identifying one of the problems that can make walking through the narrow gate difficult. Those false prophets. If we look back to the Old Testament, what do you think was the greatest threat to the, to the nation of Israel throughout the years? Was it the military might of the Philistines? How about the Amalekites or even the Assyrians? Now, I would say the greatest threat to the nation of Israel was the false prophets. Jeremiah was a great example of this. God used Jeremiah to warn Israel that if they didn't repent from their disobedience, there would would be judgment against them. God was going to destroy the temple and send them into exile in Babylon for 70 years if they didn't listen to Jeremiah and repent. And here comes the problem. Every time Jeremiah, a single man, pronounced the terrifying reality of a coming judgment, there would be a hundred false prophets that would step forward to contradict him. They'd say, no, 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 no. God isn't like that. God is a God of love. He loves his people. Nothing will happen to the temple. God would never allow the children of Abraham to be taken captive into a foreign land. It, It just, it wouldn't happen. So here we have God screaming to his people through Jeremiah, the judgment is coming, and a multitude of false prophets who are telling the people exactly what they want to hear. God would never do this to you. Peace is upon you. There's nothing to worry about. And we know what happened. God judged Israel, and they were sent into exile. They consistently and persistently rejected God's call to repentance through Jeremiah because they chose to gather around them false teachers that would say what their itching ears wanted to hear. And that should remind us of some New Testament verbiage here. Paul talks about this. We have to know that the military, the governments, the powers that be, they had the power to wield the sword, which meant they could physically kill. But the false prophets were and are so much more dangerous because they bring in and preach destructive heresies and a false gospel that sends people to hell. Now, I know it's a strong statement, but it's it's true. And Jesus himself is warning us of this reality. False prophets in sheep's clothing, meaning they look and act just like us, but inwardly in their mind and heart, they're wolves. And not just wolves, but Jesus uses a descriptor here that he calls them ravenous wolves. That means that their, their appetite is insatiable. It's greedy, gluttonous, impossible to fill, which means no amount of destruction will appease them. We have to understand the danger here. And Paul understands this danger of false, pro, uh, false teaching all too well. In Galatians 1.8, Paul says, but even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. Anyone that would distort and twist the word of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ, according to scripture, should be seen as an agent of destruction. Because a false gospel can't save. All it can do is condemn. This is why we must passionately contend for the faith and for truth and be willing to call out those who are false teachers. And when I say that, I know that there are some who would say, whoa, 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 it's not our place to call out false teachers. But that is just, that's not biblical. Look at Paul. He constantly, throughout his letters, would call out false teachers. If you look at 1 Timothy 1, 2 Timothy 1, and 2 Timothy 2, just as some examples, Paul actually calls these false teachers out by name in his letter. And in verse 16, here in Matthew 7, Jesus tells us how we can know who these false teachers are. We will know them by their fruit. In other words, they can be identified by what their lives produce. And that's looking at the totality of their life. Are their personal lives being lived out in holiness or in sinfulness? How many times have we seen pastors of megachurches fall to secret sexual sin that becomes exposed, not because of their brokenness over the sin, but because they've been caught? And yeah, we we aren't going to always have a window into their personal lives, but there's another part to this. The other part is how do they handle, teach, and preach the Word of God? Are they faithfully teaching biblical truth, or are they preaching to those itching ears that want to hear something different? The only way we're going to know if someone is twisting the gospel and mishandling the word of God as if we ourselves become intimately acquainted with God's word. We must know the word. That is the best way to not only protect ourselves from false teaching, 
then we can also become a light to help others that may themselves be entangled in false teaching. So I, I can't stress enough what Jesus is warning us about here. Men that are false teachers disguising themselves as disciples of Jesus. Paul talks about this in 2 Corinthians 11, that we shouldn't be surprised by this because even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. False teachers mislead others through wrapping a lie with the skin of a truth. So the question we have to ask ourselves is this, are we well acquainted enough with the truth, with God's word, to spot the lies that are wrapped in truth? And if you're not, if you find that, man, man, I'm not sure, get yourself involved with someone who knows the Word of God. Get into a discipleship uh, relationship with someone. There are so many different ways. There are so many resources online, Desiring God, Ligonier. There's just so many places we can go to find biblical truth. I want to encourage you to passionately pursue that to ensure that you protect your own heart and you have the ability to protect uh, others as well. All right, guys. Love you. God bless. Have a great week. and We'll talk to you soon.